This is Tyler. He's a 38-year-old white American male patriot living in southern Texas. If you've ever watched a YouTube video about Russia, you've probably met Tyler in the comments section. His favorite hobbies include shooting his favorite gun, hunting, fishing, and these days, watching videos about the war in Ukraine that make him upset. Tyler is also a very passionate guy. He's upset that his politicians are sending billions of dollars to support a foreign war, and he isn't afraid to say so. He's also at least half convinced that Russia might actually be the good guys. And since he's so passionate, Tyler loves to share his point of view on social media, especially in YouTube comments, where he hopes to make a difference and sway other people to his side. But there's just a few problems. For someone who claims to be a born and raised Texas patriot, with English as his first and only language, Tyler's English isn't actually very good. When writing his YouTube comments, he gets a few things consistently wrong, especially when attempting to use English articles, like the words the or a. For example, when expressing his displeasure about monetary support for Ukraine, Tyler might say, I don't know why we sending money to the Ukraine, when what he really means to say is, I don't know why we're sending money to Ukraine. And Tyler also likes to reinforce the fact that he is a American citizen, when he's actually trying to communicate that he is an American citizen. Normally, such small language discrepancies are understandable, because English can be a very difficult language to master for a non-native speaker. But that's not what Tyler is claiming to be. And what's even more suspicious, Tyler also likes to frequently say, I don't support Russia, but, before proceeding to repeat Russian talking points word for word, showing that he does, indeed, support Russia, but just doesn't want to admit it to his target audience. As for his active hours, Tyler likes to comment during the hours of 10 p.m. to 8 a.m. Pacific, the precise times when he should be asleep in his bed but when people in Moscow and St. Petersburg are wide awake, working their 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. shifts. There's a simple reason for all these discrepancies. And if you haven't figured it out already, it's because Tyler isn't real. Aww. Sure, there's probably a version of Tyler somewhere that is real, and that version of Tyler could very well be a very nice guy, and is fully entitled to his own opinions, because Tyler lives in America, not Russia, after all. But not this Tyler. This Tyler is actually a 21-year-old Russian operative sitting in a secure building somewhere in St. Petersburg, working 12-hour shifts with strict quotas on the volume of YouTube comments he's required to produce every single day. And unlike the real Tyler, this fake Tyler is in no way, shape, or form entitled to his own opinions. That's because fake Tyler is a Russian troll employed by the Kremlin to repeat official Russian talking points as if he were an American citizen. And this Russian troll has created fake Tyler to adopt the persona of the American he feels is most likely to be influential in swaying real Americans to a point of view that benefits Russia the most. I speak! The ability to speak does not make you intelligent. Now get out of here. It's not such a bad gig. For living in Russia, fake Tyler is paid quite well. According to some sources, he's paid better even than your average Russian doctor or teacher, despite Fake Tyler's complete lack of education or professional training. And Fake Tyler certainly earns far more, and is far safer, fighting on the front lines of Russian information warfare than he would be if he were fighting on the actual front lines of the actual war in Ukraine as a real Russian soldier. The scariest part is that Fake Tyler is not alone. This is just one of many personas adopted by this single Russian operative. And there are thousands of other operatives just like him on the Kremlin's payroll. As you'll learn today, Russia spends millions, perhaps even billions of dollars, funding trolls just like this to spread disinformation across every conceivable corner of the internet, creating fake social media accounts, fake news sites, or even fake comments on YouTube videos exactly like the one you're watching right now. Psst. Over here. In fact, if you're watching this video at least five minutes after it's been uploaded, chances are they're already there, lurking in the shadows. And you can go to the comment section to see the evidence for yourself. But if you don't see any yet, don't you worry. 
I'll be sharing some of their best work at different spots throughout this video. And while there will be plenty of time for jokes and games, there's also a more serious side to this that you should probably stick around to learn. Because while these trolls are generally pretty fun to play with, the truth is, they are not harmless. They serve a very dark, nefarious purpose. And while their impact may seem benign to people living on the other side of the planet from Russia's wars, the truth is, these Russian trolls are currently having a very real effect on everyday Americans and Europeans. From high energy prices, to uncertainty about inflation that could wipe out savings, to high interest rates leading to unaffordable real estate, global conflicts are currently contributing to the havoc taking place within Western economies. And JP Morgan CEO Jamie Dimon has said that the thing he worries about the most is the war in Ukraine, highlighting that the geopolitics following Russia's invasion are one of today's largest economic concerns. For centuries, in times of conflict like these, High net worth individuals have survived instability by investing in safe haven assets. And today, it's easier than ever for everyday investors to do the same, with museum grade fine art. Masterworks, the sponsor of this video, has created a one of a kind database of art auctions from the past 50 years, and they've used it to purchase blue chip art they believe will appreciate in value. They qualify these offerings with the SEC, allowing you to invest in works from names like Picasso. Banksy, and Basquiat. Their 16 sales to date have all returned profits to their investors, including net returns of 17%, 35%, and even 77%. Over 850,000 people have already joined the platform, and Masterworks offerings often sell out quickly, sometimes within minutes. So there is a waitlist to join. But Icarus Project subscribers can skip the line and get started today using the link in the description. See important disclosures at masterworks.com slash cd. I am not currently an investor with Masterworks. Internet trolls come in a wide variety of shapes and sizes. Some are more like pixies, just there to taunt anyone they come in contact with for a bit of fun and games. Other internet trolls are more like the trolls from The Hobbit, ravenous, angry beasts that will try to devour anything they come into contact with, but very vulnerable when exposed to just a tiny bit of sunlight. Most varieties of troll are frustrating, but ultimately usually harmless. But then there's the trolls you really have to worry about. A special variety that, unlike naturally occurring trolls, have been specifically engineered and manipulated into their present form. And you're sure to encounter this variety of troll anytime you consume content around your country's election season. Or, especially these days, content related to Russia and the war in Ukraine. On the surface, they might seem like just your garden variety of native internet trolls. Wild, untamed beasts roaming the landscape that are easy enough to spot and avoid. But with this specially engineered variety of troll, you actually have to be a lot more careful. Because these trolls aren't just lone wolves wandering the wilds. They are scouts and servants of the Dark Emperor himself, created by him to roam the grounds outside his dark castle to taint the land in preparation for his coming arrival. Like this guy right here. The ability to speak does not make you intelligent. Now get out of here. The good news is, like trolls in fairy tales, a lot of them don't even know how to speak properly, so the majority of their target audience doesn't even understand them, wasting the Kremlin's precious money, like our friend, Fake Tyler. But others are more effective. They play a critical role in dividing and confusing public opinion, to promote distraction or apathy when it comes to taking meaningful action against Russia, so that Russia can then proceed to do whatever they want in the global sphere with less interference than they would otherwise normally have like invading their neighbor and annexing 20% of their territory. We'll get to that. But first, let's start with an example that's certain to not cause any controversy at all. The 2016 and 2020 U.S. presidential elections. Between Donald Trump Hillary Clinton and Joe Biden, respectively, 
These central events that caused Russian trolldom to rise to the level of public consciousness for the first time. Tonight, a look inside Russia's disinformation campaign. As Russia got caught red-handed, pun intended, intentionally seeding division into American politics, resulting in several groundbreaking news reports and academic papers. If you're curious to check the sources. Russia's strategy involved playing both sides to help inflame controversial issues, so that the American people would turn against each other more fiercely than they already were, and lose their focus on international affairs, causing them to largely not notice or care as Russia began its preparations for its invasion of Ukraine. If you were on the internet in the United States during those elections, or even observing from afar, you may have considered logging off for good or only switching out of airplane mode to download the next level of Candy Crush. And nobody would have blamed you. It was a frustrating time to be an American, or perhaps a humorous time to be a person watching Americans, and probably our nation's most divided point in history since the Civil War. Whatever side of the political spectrum you found yourself on, you probably remember at least one or more of these hot-button issues. Hillary Clinton's emails, Hunter Biden's laptop, Black Lives Matter, Colin Kaepernick taking a knee, and of course, arguably the most controversial of them all, the infamous jab debates. But what you may not remember, or may never have even heard, is that Russia was involved behind the scenes of the social media headache for all of them. Hmm. We have proof. While Americans were busy arguing with each other and responding to Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton's latest tweet about today's new set of insane news reports, various less widely seen reports began to emerge that Russia had been spending tens of millions of dollars per year employing a specialized workforce in a secretive building at 55 Savushkina Street in St. Petersburg. Inside this secretive building, Russia was hoarding a massive army of professional internet trolls and their bread-and-butter expertise was manipulating social media algorithms. These trolls were trained to specifically identify potential hot-button issues in American politics, and then to work to make them go viral so that the Americans could do the rest of the hard work of arguing with each other for themselves. These characters were carefully crafted to transmit the Kremlin's thoughts to the public. Specifically how it worked, the Russian trolls had a list of topics that they were intentionally looking to inflame including things like race and gender, gun rights, and immigration. And they spent their working hours every day looking for, or sometimes manufacturing, emotional videos or news stories that could help these hot-button issues rise to the top of America's public consciousness. Once they found one, they would gather a critical mass of other trolls to like, comment, and share the content until it activated the respective algorithms and reached a point of no return, as it was brought to a rolling boil in the public consciousness of the entire nation. The Russian trolls would then continue to stoke the flames and test out new ways to make the issue more divisive than it already was, usually by promoting extreme disinformation to both sides, or manufacturing false evidence. Then, once that topic began to die down, or Americans became so sick of it that they stopped checking their news feeds, Russia would rinse and repeat. Russia wasn't inventing division out of thin air. It was just throwing gasoline on the flames so that things would combust faster. And the strategy worked. American friends and families began to increasingly divide along party lines, and the ground was fertile for Russia to begin provoking international affairs without the need to fear a unified American response. Nobody was concerned about the bear waking up from its long hibernation because everybody was convinced that the donkey or the elephant in their own nation was a fierce lion in disguise. Russia became so brazen that they would even go on to interfere directly in the U.S. elections. And while whether or not that interference actually occurred is still considered controversial in America to this very day, it's a fact that the interference resulted in no less than 12 Russian military officers being placed on the FBI's most wanted list, which is pretty concrete evidence that something very suspicious actually took place. After all, no country risks starting a conflict by threatening to arrest another country's military officers unless they're reasonably sure that the conflict is already ongoing. Still, most Americans didn't hear anything about the Russian troll farms. Not because the reports and evidence didn't exist, 
but because they were so focused on the issues that were dividing them that they never stopped to consider their source. And speaking of sources, if you're a Russian troll, or this all sounds so crazy that your mind is already reaching for the old faithful comment of Russian trolls. Source, trust me bro. Let me assure you that source, not trust me bro, but source, see description. The same as it is for every episode that I post on this channel. And that source is not my senile grandmother, or tomato sauce, or I made it the f up. It's from, oh, I don't know, sources like the New York Times, The Guardian, scholarly academic papers, media outlets leaning towards both major U.S. political parties, including both Fox News and CNN, and the FBI itself. So, you know. It's a little bit more credible than that poor guy in the YouTube comments who the Kremlin assigns to try to recover from this absolute disaster of a video that is completely annihilating them and all their talking points. Let's all say a prayer for fake Tyler. He's really got his work cut out for him on this one. I'm not saying you can't play with him, but play nice. And I'm talking to you now, fake Tyler. If you're feeling a little sick of your job right now, you know, you do have other options. I hear Russia has some nice, uncomfy beds in the trenches of eastern Ukraine that they're struggling to fill. I hear you even help them put those there. So if you're ever feeling sick of commenting lies on YouTube for a living, I'm sure they'd be more than happy to have you. In all seriousness, there is massive evidence for Russian trolls intervening in American politics in 2016 and 2020, times when, compared to today, Russia did not have nearly as much to gain as it does right now. And if they were there then, you can bet that they're there in even greater force right now. These trolls have two major goals. If they can, their goal is to promote talking points that directly benefit Russia. But usually, that's not possible. And in that case, their goal is then to create enough confusion or apathy to prevent America or other Western allies from taking a meaningful stance against them. A big part of what trolls do today is to try to manufacture a world where people don't feel like they can trust any information. Because if they manage to create a reality where people feel like facts don't exist, or if people feel that they can't trust anything coming from either side, Russia and other bad actors ultimately benefit because nobody is going to want to risk their money or their safety fighting against an enemy that they're not even totally sure is actually in the wrong. And with this in mind, the Russian troll's primary goal today is to nullify or postpone support for Ukraine so that they, the much larger nation, can outlast Ukraine and win the war. Meanwhile, back at home, Strict control over Russian media and the flow of information ensures that they will continue to have a steady stream of soldiers that believe their talking points to press the invasion. These are not just innocent YouTube comments. It's called information warfare for a reason. Today's breed of trolls is a breed that is very similar to the classic fairy tale trolls that hid under bridges and then attempted to scare travelers into turning back into the lands that they came from. Their goal is often not to sway people to a particular point of view, although they will if they can. But more often, like the trolls of mythology, they don't ultimately care which direction you go once you turn around. They just don't want you to cross their particular bridge over the boundary into where you can intervene in the lands they've been dispatched to protect. That's why you'll often see trolls playing both sides of the political fence and why you'll see trolls that post simple comments aimed at creating confusion. For example, the simple comments like propaganda, or Western cope, or you're obviously funded by the CIA, that plague every one of the videos I post. These comments are quite funny to me, and I've come to the point where I actually enjoy seeing them, because it proves that I'm doing something right the more of these comments I receive. But these comments are also deviously effective with a very simple word or phrase that can easily be spammed across multiple videos with zero changes and zero mental effort, they can create doubt in the truth of what's been posted, without even having to attempt to create a substantive argument refuting the claims made in the video. Words like propaganda, 
or basic phrases like, you made all this up, or you're lying and russophobic, are very effective in creating an emotionally charged fear that prevents people from taking action. Because nobody wants to fall prey to propaganda, and nobody wants to feel like they are being a russophobe and being unfair by being upset with another nation. Even if that nation has recently invaded another, leveled numerous cities and towns, bomb civilian infrastructure without need or cause, and killed literally hundreds of thousands of people for no good reason. But while these emotionally charged comments might not be effective in winning an academic argument, they can be very effective in keeping people mostly apathetic, even if they're 99% convinced that Russia is wrong. Because that nagging 1% of uncertainty is enough for most people to do nothing. That's why Russia invests millions and perhaps billions of dollars in manufacturing that 1%. And it doesn't matter how many sources the content has. If a piece of content that is critical of Russia cites 10 verified sources, they'll still say the content just made it up and appeal to their own personal experience as a Russian to prove it's not true, as if the specific experiences of the Russians interviewed in the sources are invalid. Ironically, they will provide zero sources in their comment when doing this. Alternatively, they might simply say the sources used in the content are unreliable, with no other explanation, even if they come from some of the most reputable media organizations in the entire world. As a rule of thumb, if a YouTube comment says that a reputable media source is unreliable, there's an extremely good chance that the source is actually very reliable and simply damaging to the commentator's own worldview. If all else fails, Russian trolls can fall back on the tried and true tactic of whataboutism. This is where they will point to things that America or NATO did 20, 40, or even 200 years ago, usually exaggerated or taken out of context but not always, as justification for what Russia is currently doing today. For example, if I post a video about how Russia is mistreating ethnic Siberians today, they will cite statistics about how America mistreated Native Americans 200 years ago. Of course, the difference is, while nobody is responsible for the sins of their fathers, everyone is responsible for the choices they make today. The question is, if I'm so sure these comments are coming from Russian trolls, why don't I just delete them? And there's a simple reason. Because unlike Russia, which puts its own citizens in jail for up to 15 years for disputing Kremlin talking points about the war, or even for simply calling it a war, I believe in freedom of speech. And I don't fear Russian propaganda, because I know that, in the end, truth will win. Truth has no fear of the light or of examination. Truth is easier to maintain over time, because truth is naturally consistent, unlike lies. And only a propaganda machine resorts to silencing its opponents, because fear is the only way to keep the truth from coming to full light when you are floating on a sea of lies. Have fun in the comment section on this one, guys. And if you enjoy this content, I'd be very grateful if you'd consider becoming a patron by using the link in the description of this video. Patrons receive special benefits, like early access to content, a direct line to suggest video topics, and the ability to communicate with me directly, rather than getting lost in a sea of YouTube comments where I'm usually distracted trolling the trolls. And as I cover more and more controversial topics like this one, the topics that we really need to be discussing, I always run the risk of demonetization, which frankly, I understand. But your patron support helps ensure the channel can keep running no matter what. If you want more on this topic, check out my video on how Russia stole Siberia for some of the history behind Russia's modern-day divide-and-conquer strategies. See you on the next one. Mm -hmm.